Hi, in this series of videos, I want to talk about a new feature in ACI called Remote Physical Leave. Now, there are two ways you can go about deploying this. And the first example on the left is if you have a simple single pod ACI fabric and you want to extend some remote physical leaves to a remote, remote location, but those leaves are part of the same single pod one. Now, in the example on the right, if you have a multi pod fabric, I have pod one and pod two, and I want to extend remote physical leaves as part of pod one, but I want to make it such that any endpoint, regardless of where it's connected, pod one, pod two, or a remote site, can all reach each other. Now, there are some prerequisites. This feature first came out in ACI version 3.1. You have to have second generation spines and leaves, so that means EX or FX. You can use the modular or the fixed spine as long as they're second gen. You do need to have some kind of basic WAN router and connectivity out of the remote location, and that router needs to have some basic feature support, namely OSPF and DHCP relay. And there are some reachability requirements between the remote location and any spines in the ACI you know, main site. Uh, and that is 300 milliseconds maximum latency and at least 100 megabits per second in bandwidth. Now we are going to be using some fixed VLANs very similar to Multipod and we're going to be using VLAN 4 or VLAN 4 plus VLAN 5 and I will explain that when we come to the deployment video. And then finally we're going to need a separate TEP pool for each set of remote leaves in a different remote location. So when you're deploying the remote physical leaves, you have two approaches here at the remote location. You can deploy them as a pair of standalone leaves. You can deploy them alternatively as a VPC pair, but you can't do that both at the same time. Now in ACI version 3.2 and later, we do add the ability to have orphaned ports. So, some, so you can deploy as a VPC pair, some things can be connected over a VPC, some things can be connected to a single access port without any problem. And then finally, because we're using VXLAN between the leaves and the remote location, we do need to account for that extra encapsulation overhead, so MTU uh, will likely need to be adjusted across the WAN. Let me very quickly show you my lab topologies here, because I'm going to deploy this both ways. So in the first example, where I have a single pod, so no multi-pod, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a layer 3 out, just like we do in multipod, from my home site here to my layer 3 WAN router. Now I'm going to be borrowing my IPN devices, but in your case it could be any layer 3 WAN connectivity, doesn't really matter. And then on the remote site, uh, and also part of pod 1, I will be extending leaf 105. Uh, now note that I will be using a fixed VLAN 4 to establish that when I build my layer 3 outs. Now let me show you the second example. This is where I have multi-pod set up. So you notice here I've got my pod one here. I've got my IPN devices. Down here in the middle section I've got pod two. And I still want to then extend my remote leaf number 105, but it's going to be a part of pod one. But I want full connectivity for any endpoint in any pod remote or at home. Now notice I'm going to be creating two layer 3 outs for each proper pod. I have the existing VLAN 4 layer 3 out, I will create a second layer 3 out using VLAN 5, and I will do that for both pod 1 and pod 2 and any other pods that I have connected here. Now also note the colors. VLAN 4 belongs to a VRF that I've established across my layer 3 devices, and VLAN 5 is in a different VRF that I named Rleaf, uh, and I will explain that when I actually go to the deployment video when I'm showing multipod as to why we need these different VRFs. I strongly recommend before you get started that you get organized. So figure out which interfaces are connected where. You're going to need to set aside some IP addresses for the layer 3 outs. Uh, and then of course you're also going to need some new loopbacks to support a remote leaf. Two more things, you're going to need to define a remote leaf TEP pool that's different from anything you've got going on in your pods. And then finally, write down any serial numbers of your remote leaf because you will need those when it comes time to join that remote leaf to the, to the main pod. Now in this example, this is without multipod. And then this is the example with multipod. Rest assured, I will show each of these in an independent video. But my point here is just get yourself organized, write things down ahead of time before you go on to deployment. 
and that's it. So look forward to the next video where I will deploy remote physical leaf in example number one where I have just a simple single pot ACI fabric. Thank you.